Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I have these Paul Rubens professional watercolour paints that were sent to me by a representative of Paul Rubens who reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked me if I would like to try them and I'll be swatching them for you today. They also sent me some watercolour paper, 300 GSM cold pressed, and I'll be swatching on this watercolour paper, so we'll be trying out both today. I will open the watercolours so that you can see what is in them, well, in the box. <laughs> Let me oh, open this. And as you can see, they have this cloth, this protective cloth. Open this up and they're in a metal watercolour palette. I love this design on watercolour palettes. And I'll just open them up for you to see inside. And here are the watercolours. They also come with a leaflet which explains what colours are in the palette and it also has their pigment numbers so that's valuable information and it also comes with a little watercolour swatching card and it's upside down <laughs> sorry little watercolour swatching card so that you can swatch your colours. Um, I'll be swatching on a pre-made on a pre-made um, layout that I made, and I'll just set everything up. I'll basically unwrap the colours because they're all wrapped in paper at the moment, and I'll be back to swatch them for you. I'm back. I've unwrapped all the colours and I'll just show you what they look like they look really pretty and um, added a drop of water to each half pan just to wake it up and I'll begin swatching oh before I begin just let me add that um, all the relevant links to the palette I'm going to leave in the video description below for those who are interested. Okay, so that being said, let's begin swatching. Now the first colour is Chinese white and I'm just going to test how opaque it is. It shouldn't be too opaque. It is quite opaque. Maybe when it dries, it won't be too much. This is PW6. Oh, it's PW6. For some reason, I thought Chinese white was PW4. But maybe I'm mistaken. And I'll dilute it just to see. Yeah. Not much to see other than the opacity here, and that it is white. It may be a little bit noisy today because we are going through like a mini heat wave and it's quite warm. So I've opened all the windows, so there's going to be probably a lot of bird chirping, which is always welcome, um, but also traffic, which isn't. So I apologize for that. Um, Okay, next we have light lemon yellow, which is PY3. And let's do mass tone first. Very bright. Lifts very nicely off the half pan. Say semi-opaque oh my goodness so much traffic today where are, where is everyone going um, and 
now trans transparent translucent diluted sorry being distracted by the traffic I hope they calm down or I'm gonna have to close the windows that's very pretty very bright and very pretty next we have cadmium yellow hue which is PY151 this I expect to be opaque yes that's quite a lot of opacity it's a nice yellow warmer than the light lemon yellow Dilute that. Oh, some peace. Yes. It's the curse of me making a video. Like it's it's peaceful, and then I start making a video, and all the traffic begins. I'm going, why? Why does everyone decide on this moment to drive past? Okay. Next we have um this reads a bit like Italian yellow, but no, it's Indian yellow. Um and oh this is PY110 plus PY15. That's nice. Um, I can see some paint streaking, but that is probably because of the way I scooped up the paint from the half pan. I'm going to see diluted what it does. Oh, that's pretty. That is very pretty. This next one is Naples Yellow. And I'm looking at it and saying to myself, that doesn't look like a Naples Yellow. That looks like a flesh tint to me. I'll show you what I mean. Um, yeah, that looks like a flesh tint. This is a mix of PW6, PR242 and P. Y forty two. And let's um, dilute that. Yes, it looks like a flinch, a flinch. <laughs> A flesh tint. There we go. The paper is really nice. It doesn't have too much tooth. It, I mean, it's presented as cold pressed on on the um, on the packaging, but it's. I would say it. It feels more like it leans more between cold press and hot pressed. There isn't a lot of texture. Orange is next. And this looks, well, this looks intense. This is P071. Yes. Again, semi opaque, I think. I can see paper coming through. It's not covering the paper a hundred percent. No, we're not going to do a wonky circle. 
um, dilute that. The colors are looking really vibrant and happy so far. Oh, that is nice. Wonder what it's gonna dry like. Is it going to keep its vibrancy? We'll see. Next we have cadmium red hue, which is PR25. Wool. Quite opaque. Yes, this is opaque, I'd say. Yeah, total coverage. Dilute that. It's quite similar to the orange, just darker. Ah, yes, not that similar when diluted. Oh, that's very pretty. Um, yeah, I think we, we are on the verge of a wonky circle here. Yikes, okay. I'll just leave it as is. Maybe I'll lift a little bit of colour. Yeah, just to see the colour better. Next we have Carmine, which is PB19. I'm very familiar with PB19. We all are, I think. It's in most palettes, like um, most mixing palettes that are being sold. Oh my goodness, what is going on with this circle? Yes, as I was saying, it's um, it's quite a it's a quite a, a color that you'll find a lot in ready palettes that are like ready mixing palettes that you can buy from a shop. Yeah, a nice cool pink when diluted. Next we have magenta, which is PV42. PV42 magenta. I'd say cooler than the carmine even. Darker. Difficult to paint in mess tone, which means that it's not opaque. And just dilute that. Yeah, it's either a cooler pink, it's a nice cool pink. Okay. Next we have Violet, which is a mixture of PB29 and PB19. So it's ultramarine, uh, blue and carmine. nice i wonder if there's going to be any granulation when i um when i paint it diluted we shall see um it's 
very pretty. It's very vibrant. Very vibrant and pretty colour. That's, um, yeah, that's it. So far, none of the colours have granulated. This, for example, I'd expect to have some granulation because of the ultramarine. Possible? I'm going to have to wait and see when it dries. Next, we have indigo, which is PB15 and PB66. Oh, it's quite difficult to lift. Let's try again. Oh, um, okay. I'm going to try. Oh, that isn't right. That is okay. That maybe there's something not quite right with this half pack because I'm lifting, but nothing's happening, and that can't be right. Um, I'll show you. So this is the, the indigo. I am trying to lift, as you can see, there isn't much colour coming off, so mm, I'm not sure what is going on here, because if that's the colour, I'm a bit bemused. I'm really trying here. No. Okay, that is a strange, strange thing. Because that can't be, that can, cannot be right. Okay. I'll move on from there and go to the ultramarine. which, yeah, lifts beautifully. This, of course, is PB29. It's a lovely, vivid ultramarine. It's jumping off the page. And dilute that. And I'm really hoping for some granulation here. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for some granulation as we haven't seen it yet. It'd be nice to have a color that has some texture so you can add it to other colors, for instance, making greens and having some textured greens. I think I can see some and a little bit here. Okay, now we've done the first row of colours. I'm going to need to go and wash my, my palette and I'll be back and we'll continue where we left off. I'm back with a clean palette, so let's continue. Okay, so we're going to try and swatch Prussian Blue. Oh, this is... PB27, but again, okay, I am a bit bemused with this. This seems to be having the same problem the indigo has, it just will not lift. Very little, 
and I pre-wet these so you'd think this is very weak you'd think that it would be easier to lift okay so seems to be some issue with the blues for anyone who has this palette have you or has other um, Paul Rubens colors have you ever come across something like this um, let's dilute that it it has particles in and in a way it's pretty but it's not what I expected not a Prussian blue the hue's correct, but it's too it's too weak. And the particles it's just it's just too weak. Not as weak as the indigo, which um again may look like a really pretty colour and it is, but it's not what I expected. Okay, um Cyan which is the next one, is another blue, so this will be interesting. PB15 column 3. Ah, oh, this looks like it's lifting okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very intense. And very... almost opaque, which, you know, for a um, phthalo is quite impressive I always think of phthalos being transparent and yes the cyan is behaving normally from my experience okay so brilliant green next is PG7 see this looks like it is lifting okay quite intense yeah and yeah it's it's yeah typical phthalo um again impressive that it has that amount of coverage it doesn't have completely I can see white bits coming through but and a very intense like emerald green color which is a green that you can mix many greens from Gonna add some earth colours to make some more earthy greens. Blues, you get more teal, light greens. May green is PG7. This looks like it's going to be very bright and it lifts easily from the pan. Again, quite a impressive that it has that coverage though you, I can see the streaks of paint Phalos in mass tone are rarely a success <laughs> um, and diluted that's um drying nicely very bright green again a green that you can mix some really pretty greens from um, like olive greens mostly with this color because it leans towards yellow now we have permanent green which is P um, this can't be right. I said PO62, but that is not right. 
I apologize for that. Um, I can look in the booklet later and let you know and add it here. This. Oh. That looks nice. I think this might have a thalo in it because I think I can see a little bit of a thalo hue. Maybe wrong. I'll have to check later. Um, dilute that. This is a more natural green, still not 100% natural, but a much more natural green than those two. This could do with a little bit of mixing, it'll be a really nice green. Olive green yellowish next, which is PO62 and PG36. Yeah, oh, very opaque. Very opaque. And let's see, diluted. Quite dull, it's a dull olive green. Okay, yellow ochre is next. P white forty two. That's a nice ochre. Let's add a little bit more and dilute that. Burnt Umber is next, which is PY42, which I find a little strange for a Burnt Umber, for it to be PY, but we shall see. Okay, let's pick up a little bit more. Again, I can see particles of paint in here, which I don't mind. Just adds interest, but it reminds me of the particles that are in the other paints, which are quite weak. Um, dilute that. Um, which is a mixture of PB15 column one, PBR7 and PBK6. So it's got a black in it and a thalo in it. And a brown. It's nice. It's quite nice. I like that. Um, and Yes, it's a very greyish brown. Be interesting to see if there's any colour separation because of the three different pigments on there. Can't see any blue. We'll wait. English red next, which is the typical PR101. One. 
that's a pretty hue. Really nice red earth. Let's dilute that. It's a very pretty red earth. Payne's Green is next which is PR101 and PBK7 and PB29. So this has ultramarine blue in it, black and an red earth, which is an interesting mix. Oh, that looks nice, but I would have to see diluted and see what happens. It's almost got a violent, violent? <laughs> no, violet undertone to it. It's probably the mixture of the PB29 PR101. And dilute that. That's nice. Not very blue, it's more, it leans towards violet. And the last color, I'll just lift this before. See that? Yeah, you can see that it separates. This separates. This, I can see it separating. The earth just settling in there. And separating from the blue which is nice and the last one is PBK6 and it is a black and yeah it is a black indeed looks like a warm black be sure I'm going to need to dilute it and see it better because I can't really tell. Oh, ah, hmm, an intentional bleed here. Okay, that's quite pretty. <laughs> that's quite pretty. I'm just going to leave that. Totally wonky circle, by the way. But that was a happy accident. I like the bleeding into that. No, it looks more, it looks cooler now. Probably a mid black. Because I can't really be sure of it. I keep going, oh, is it cool? Is it warm? And when that happens, I know it's a mid one. It's a mid black. Anyway, those are our colours. Um, yes, so these are the Paul Rubens professional watercolours. All these are really pretty and the, um, where was it? Yes, the ultramarine has granulated somewhat. It hasn't granulated a lot, but the paper isn't that textured. So it could be also the paper. Um, this violet has a little bit of granulation, which has the PB29. Um, now, the sepia has a tiny bit. This Payne's Grey, again, with the PB29 in it, is granulating a little bit. Now, the indigo and the Prussian blue, I, I really don't know, are all Paul, Paul Rubens indigos and Prussian blue like that? Is that how they're supposed to be? Because I I just don't, I don't believe that something that has a PB15 in it will behave that way. And 
PB, same with PB27, I don't expect it to behave that way. And yeah, the, the burnt umbos has a really interesting texture, but it has that little particle separation. So I am not sure. Um, this has such separation of the particles here. It's like so much. So for people um, who are looking for something like that, if their Prussian brew is genuinely like that, and this isn't just a manufacturing error, then that's the colour for you. Um, all the other colours are are lovely. They, they're quite flat. They don't have a lot of texture to them. And um, they... I think they're suited for people that don't want texture in their watercolors. They prefer like a flat color. And yeah, I think that is suited for them. These watercolors are suited for them. I wanted to thank Paul Rubens for sending these to me. Thank you so much. And thanks to all of you who sat who sat through this with me and um, through this video while I was swatching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so um, I will leave you here with my awkward bit. So I have tried to do my awkward bit, like this is the third time. <laughs> I keep messing it up. So what is it going to take for me to actually <laughs> learn this i've done so many videos it's like 70 videos now that i've done and you think i'd you know get the awkward bit not awkward but no nah. anyway i'll try again and fingers crossed this will work so if you would like to see more of my videos i'd love you to subscribe and if you do subscribe, just hit the notification button so that YouTube will let you know what I am, when I've up uploaded a new video. And talking about uploading new videos, I have in the horizon, I have uh, Schminke Horridum watercolors, and I've also have um, Stone Ground Co watercolors that are arriving. So I'm very excited about those two and I've got much more also planned. So if you would like to subscribe, we'd love, love, love to have you here. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button because uh, that way you let YouTube know that you like the, uh, the video and that helps the video's visibility. And also if you would like to, I love your comments. I try and read them all I try and answer them all um, so leave me a comment let me know what you think of these colors let me know if you've tried these colors anything really or say hello that would be lovely um, what else what else I think that's all for the awkward bit now um, my little bit about hope which I say every week um, don't lose hope. I know things can get really dark. Um, believe me, I, I do know that things get, can get really, really dark. And sometimes you feel there's nothing that you can hold on to um, to keep going. But there is, and, and that little something is called hope. And it is what gets us through these difficult times. Um, hope has got me through many difficult times and I just want to remind everyone how important it is to never give up on it. Um, and for those of you who are going through a difficult time, know that I'm just right there with you, holding on to hope with you for better days ahead. I love you guys. Keep safe. Keep creative. Until next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.